Hello everyone and welcome back to National Applied Biology. Today we're going to be taking a look at scientific literacy and in particular the concept of validity. In any experiment that we do, we first of all need to think about the independent variable or the IV. And if you remember, this is the variable that is changed in a scientific experiment. You should be able to pick out what has been changed in each experiment and we'll have a look at the impact of that as well. And then in order to proceed with an experiment, you then need a variable that you're going to measure. So this could be something like the height of foam, the number of bubbles produced per minute, uh, the increase in growth. Anything like this at all would be your dependent variable and you measure that in order to give the result of a scientific experiment. Now, in terms of validity, what we're going to be looking at is that we know the independent variable is going to be different between a set and the experiment, but every other variable should be the same. So we're going to control every other variable in order to ensure that any effect that we find between the two sets in your experiment is going to be due to the independent variable and nothing else. So for example, here we have beaker with two tissues, and this is quite a popular experiment during enzymes where you might have two types of tissue that have different concentrations of catalase, for example, and you're trying to determine which one has the highest concentration of catalase. Now, in order for this to be a valid experiment, in order for this to be a fair experiment, everything else apart from the two tissue types should be exactly the same. So for example here, if our independent variable is a tissue type, then in order for this all to be valid, in order for it all to be fair, we need to look at every other variable that could affect the results. So for example, the mass of tissue. If tissue A was much bigger than tissue B, we could see that that's what caused uh, the difference in our dependent variable, not the fact that tissue A, for example, maybe had a higher concentration of catalase. You also need to look at the volume of solution. There's no point on doing the experiment if tissue A is in a beaker with a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide than the beaker in tissue B, that needs to be kept the same or it's not valid. We also need to look at the volume of solution. If there's only 25 millilitres of hydrogen peroxide in tissue A's beaker, but there's 100 millilitres of hydrogen peroxide in tissue B, that is not fair, it's not valid, and therefore you could say that is what has caused the effect rather than the independent variable. So anytime you're asked for a question on validity, you need to look at everything else that must be kept the same, that must be controlled, and that must be kept fair in order to carry out a valid experiment. The independent variable is the only part that should be different. Hope you found that useful and that answers any questions you have on validity.